Here is an example of a differential equation that you cannot separate. Try as you might, you won't be able to bring everything involving y to one side and everything involving x to the other side. However, there is a transformation that you can use to solve this non-separable differential equation. That's given in the first part of this question, where we have to get the derivative with respect to x of y over x. Now y, of course, is the dependent variable. It's a function of x. It depends on the independent variable x. So when we differentiate y with respect to x, all we can do is write down dy dx, because we don't know what y is as a function of x. We are not given that information. Okay, we have a quotient of functions here inside the brackets, so that means we have to use the quotient rule. So here is the quotient rule. It is assumed here, of course, that both u and v are functions of x, and that's exactly the situation in our problem. Both y and x are functions of x. So we take the function in the denominator, v, in this case it's x, and multiply by the derivative of the numerator. So that's dy dx, whose derivative we can't find, of course, uh, because we don't know y is a function of x. Next we have a minus sign, and we multiply u, which is what's on top, the numerator, by the derivative of what's underneath. If we differentiate x with respect to x, we just get 1. Finally, we divide everything by v squared, that's the denominator squared, x squared in this case. We can divide both of these terms on top by x squared to get 1 over x dy dx minus y over x squared. Now we can use what we just did to solve the differential equation. Notice that the answer that we got is the left-hand side of the differential equation. So we can replace the left-hand side of the differential equation with this thing here, the derivative with respect to x of y over x. equals the right-hand side of the differential equation, which is 1 over x. So now let's consider the uh, differentials in this equation. Well, here is one of them, and here's the other one. What do we call the dependent variable? Well, that's just the thing inside the brackets. This can become our dependent variable, and the independent variable is x. So we want to separate the variables. We want to get everything involving y over x on one side, that's the dependent variable, and everything involving x on the other side, the independent variable. You can see that this equation is separable. We just multiply both sides by dx. So now we int integrate both sides of this separable differential equation. So again, think of y over x as a variable. And on the left-hand side, you can think of integrating 1 with respect to y over x. Well, if we do that, we will get just the variable y over x. Um, so we just multiply 1 by whatever we are integrating with respect to. 1 is just a constant. Here we have the integral of 1 over x. Well, that's just ln of x. And we have a constant of integration, which I will put on the right-hand side. Well, there's a constant of integration from both sides, of course, as we've seen before. So we'll just put it on the right-hand side. Now we go up here to our boundary conditions. We're given that y is 1 when x is 1. So I've plugged 1 in for y and 1 in for x. Now ln of 1 is 0. So we end up getting that c is equal to 1. So now we can write down our particular solution of the differential equation. So we just plug 1 in for c and we get y over x equals ln of x plus 1. We can multiply both sides by x to get y equals x ln of x plus x. Now as an aside, let's do a check of this solution. Here is the left-hand side of the differential equation after we've subbed in the solution. So we have to get dy dx. Well, we have a product of functions here, so we have x times the derivative of ln of x, so that's x times 1 over x, plus ln of x times the derivative of x, so that's ln of x times 1. Then we differentiate 1x with respect to x to get plus 1. Um, we plug in for y here, so we get this. So we can cancel an x above and below here, uh, 1 and 1 is 2 here, so we get uh, 2 over x plus ln x over x minus ln x over x plus 1 over x. These two terms give 0. 2 over, actually this should be 
minus 1 over x here. Okay, I've separated this into two fractions. So we have 2 over x minus 1 over x. That's 1 over x. And that is indeed equal to the right-hand side.